Lesson 3.5 on exponential and logarithmic models. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what we've been doing in class so far with logarithmic models. And then we'll be talking about the different types of exponential and logarithmic models. And then um, I'll give you guys an, a, an example. And then um, I'll show you a multiple choice and a free response question. So let's get started. Okay, so <clears throat> in class so far, uh, we've done a few problems that use exponential and uh, mostly just exponential models. Um, I don't know if you remember, uh, but the first one uh, that we did um, had to do with bacteria in a petri dish. Uh, you think we started out with 50 uh, bacteria in the petri dish. Uh, and that was at time zero. Uh, but I'm going to change this problem. Instead of talking about bacteria in a petri dish, uh, let's talk about uh, like flies. So let's say after two days, there are a hundred flies. And after four days, there are 300 flies. Now the question the scientist wants to know is half, after how many days, how many flies do I have? So our x value is going to be uh, the number of flies after five days. And we're actually going to replace that x with a y. Because what we're going to use is we're going to use the equation y equals um, a e to the b t. Because this is a population growth model, it means that the population is increasing at an exponential rate just like our population of the human population has increased at an exponential rate. So first off, um, all the, the days, these are t, and all the number of flies is y. So we have to first find our a and our b value. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, 2 and 100 for t. So I have 100 equal to a e to the b times 2 for my time. That's my first equation. And my second equation is going to be 300 equal to a e to the b times 4. And the reason I want to do this is I want to find what a and b are. So in the first equation, I'm going to solve for a. So let's give myself some room down at the bottom here. So solving for a, that means I have to divide everything by e to the b, b times 2, which is the same as 2b. So I have 100 divided by e to the 2b equal to a. So that's I got that from this first equation here. Now because I have a here and a here, I can substitute them in. So I have 300 equal to my new a, which is 100 over e to the 2b times e to the 4b. Now because I have e to the 2b in the bottom and e to the 4b in the top, I can simplify this. So this still stays 300 equal to 100 but now well I'm running out of room here so what we'll do is um, I'm gonna copy this and we'll put it on a different slide okay so new slide paste there we go so here's our equation so what this gives me is I have 300 equal to 100 times e to the 4b divided by e to the 2b. Um, now since I'm multiplying by 100, I could also divide by 100 to both sides, and that reduces the left side to just 3, because 100 divided into 300 is 3. So then I look 
at my exponents, the rules of exponents tell me if I have the same base, I subtract. So I have e to the 4b minus 2b. So this is 3 equal to e to the 2b. And since I want to get rid of the e, I want to bring the b out of the exponent, I would rewrite this using logs. And since we're talking about e, we do the natural log. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, which leaves me with the natural log of 3 equal to 2b. Solving for b, I divide by 2 on both sides. So b equals the natural log of 3 divided by 2. Our original equations I had were, uh, well, I found what a was. I already had solved for a back here. a was this right here. So I'm going to copy that again. We'll take that over to our second slide. Now I, all I have to do is find what a is by taking my b value and substituting it in here. So I have a equal to 100 divided by e to the 2 times natural log of 3 divided by 2. Now the 2's will reduce each other in the exponent. So all I'm left with is 100 divided by e to the natural log of 3. And e raised to the natural log will cancel each other out. So I'm left with, or will do, reduce each other, a equal to 100 divided by 3. Which, if I put that in my calculator, should be 33.3 repeating. So now that I have my A and my B, I can use these to rewrite my equation. And actually, I'm going to rewrite, instead of to the 3 repeating, I'm just going to put 33.33. And we're going to approximate this and round. Uh, we can also approximate our B value. And so what we do is... We do natural log of 3, so 3 natural log, and then I hit divided by 2. So this is approximately 0.55. So copying those values to our equation, which was y equals a e to the bt, our new equation will be y equals a, which is 33.33, e to the bt, which we said was 0.55 t. So that would be the equation that models uh, the number of flies. But the original equation was how many flies after five days. So now I need to put five into this equation. So I have y equal to 33.33 e to the 0 0.55 times 5 days. So let's do this real quick. This gives me y equal to 33.33 e to the 5 times point... Um, Let's see, what was this? Natural log of 3, right? So 3 natural log divided by 2 times 5. So this is approximately 2.75 um, in my exponent. And then so I have E... E raised, excuse me, uh, man, where did that go? Raised to the 2.75 times 33.33 is Y is approximately going to be equal to 500 and 21 flies. So after five days, there's about 521 flies. So that's 
kind of like uh, the petri dish example, instead of uh, bacteria, we did flies. Another uh, uh, one we did from class was um, with a fossil. We got a new fossil, was found, and we know that the rate of decay for carbon-14 is 1 over 10 to the 12th e to the negative t over 8, 2, 4, 5. And the fossil ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 that was found is 1 over 10 to the 13th. So we just have to find how old it is. So we're looking for t. Since our r's are both given, we can substitute and solve. So I have 1 over 10 to the 13th equal to 1 over 10 to the 12th e to the negative t over 8, 4, 8, 2, 4, 5. So I want to get e by itself first so that I can take it out with the log, or the natural log. So I divide both sides by uh, 1 over 10 to the 12th. That's also the same as multiplying by 10 to the 12th. So I do that on both sides. Those reduce here. So on the right, I have e to the negative t over 8, 2, 4, 5. And then on the left, 10 to the 12th and 10 to the 13th reduce to just 1 over 10. So now I have e by itself. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of 1 over 10 equal to those e's cancel each other out. The e and natural log cancel each other out. I get negative t divided by 8, 2, 4, 5. Now because I want a positive t, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 8,245. So I'm multiplying. So on the right they reduce and I just have to solve for t. So t is going to approximately equal, just putting this in my calculator, I do one-tenth, the natural log of one-tenth times 8,245, and that's negative, gives me approximately 18,985, if we're rounding to the nearest year. Uh, so this would be how many years this fossil was old. So that's your exploration review. That's what we did in class. Uh, and there are tons of other questions in the exploration review. Uh, all of different types of models of exponent and logarithmic equations, which we're going to talk about right now. Uh, there are four different types, well, actually there's five different types of exponential model equations. Um, the first are exponential growth and exponential decay. They're very similar to each other. In fact, they're nearly identical. The only difference is one is growing, which is the model that we did before. Y equals AE to the BX. B has to be greater than zero, because if it was less than zero, this would not be a growth model. It would be uh, not even a decay model. It would be um, like the inverse of an exponential model almost. Not quite the inverse, because the inverse would be the natural log, but it's close. It'd be more of a fractional, so it's it'd be really funky. Uh, the, the exponential decay would be y equals a e to the negative bx, and b is still greater than zero here. Um, for the graph of these, for y equals e to the x, So we have the following every exponential model will intersect at y equal to 1. So and then what it does is it kind of tapers off. 
So if it hits 1, it'll be at x equal to 0. And then from there, it just increases exponentially. So it gets bigger and bigger really quickly. So this is growth. Now for decay, it's kind of the opposite. So here's the growth model again. I'm going to erase what it looks like as the growth, and this time I'm going to show you what it looks like with decay. So again, it still hits at x equal to 0, it still hits at 1, positive 1. But instead of increasing, it's going to decrease as we get closer and closer. As we go further and further out, it's going to decrease um, towards zero. And if we get smaller and smaller in my x, I get bigger and bigger. So you can see they're kind of mirror images of each other across the x, or excuse me, the y axis. And so this is decay. So those are the two um, exponential uh, models that are normal. We've used those before already. Uh, the next one we have is a Gaussian model. And this model is uh, a bell-shaped curve. So when you hear of a bell curve uh, in grades, you can thank Mr. Gauss for finding out this bell-shaped curve. And this is also a type of exponential model. The equation for this is y equals a e to the negative x minus b squared divided by c. Um, and b, a, b, and c are all just numbers, real numbers. And so the graph of this, let me get my axes here, is that bell curve you all are very familiar with. Okay, so what this generally does, um, and actually let me go back, I've never actually told you what this was, these equations were. This is actually y equals e to the x, and this one is y equals e to the negative x. Um, going back to the Gaussian model, I'm going to graph the equation y equals 4e to the negative x squared. So you can see my a here would be 4, my b would be 0, and my c would be 1. So the graph of this actually intersects at 4. So we have the following graph, and what it does is it intersects at 4 on the y-axis, and then it, it's identical, it's symmetrical on either side, and it curves down and then tapers out. And it does the same on the other side. And I'm not doing it justice here. Mr. Gauss would not be too happy. That's pretty good, actually. Pretty happy with that filter. Um, this is what we call a normally distributed bell curve. And the reason it's normally distributed is because um, it, it's, it has the majority of the data in the very middle, which is your average. You want your average to be high. Uh, so uh, the amount of people that get the middle scores is the highest. And the amount of people, so if you're thinking in terms of grades, like on a test or in a class, the amount of scores 
like in the C range, should be the highest, and the amount of scores with Fs and As should be about the same uh, at really low amounts. So you'll have one or two with Fs and one or two with As, and then in the middle you'll have the, the rest with uh, Cs, or you'll have about an equal amount with Bs and Ds, a little bit more than As and Fs, and then the rest of them will all be Cs. So this is what we call a normally distributed distributed curve, and it's a bell-shaped curve. So this, um, the curve that I've drawn here is for the equation y equals 4e to the negative x squared. Uh, that's our third model. The next model is the logistic model. This model works really well with advertising, and um, for example, uh, what it does is it starts out really slowly. It doesn't increase very much. And then as you get into the middle, uh, it starts to increase at a moderate rate. And then it tapers off at the very end and slowly decreases, or doesn't decrease, slowly comes to uh, a point. And it doesn't increase past a certain point. Um, so that if you think in terms of advertising, uh, a product sales, you can think of it in terms of how much a product sells for. If a product, when you first get a product out there, until you start the advertising starts getting out there, your product isn't going to sell very much. So you put out more advertising, which starts to increase your sales until a certain point of saturation when the advertising stops uh, benefiting your uh, sale value. Which is why when you all start watching TV and you see the same commercial over and over, you get annoyed and you flip the channel. When they start seeing that most people flip the channel and their sales aren't increasing from their current ads, that's when they switch the ads on you. So that's why there's so many Pepsi commercials, so many Coke commercials, McDonald's, any kind of um, commercial, that's all advertising and they always switch it up because their sales are starting to dip down a bit or they're starting to to peak and they're not continuing to go up. So this is the logistic model. Uh, it follows the equation y equals a over 1 plus b e to the negative oh, I think that's an r, I can't read my handwriting, <laughs> to the negative rx. So let me kind of show you what that looks like in a graph. So um, these have a asymptote on them. So let's say I have my asymptote at 3. So here's my x and y axis. My graph it starts out really slow, and then it starts to increase at a moderate level, and then it starts to taper off. And actually, that's not a really good representation, but there we go. That's better. So you can see as I start out on the left side over here, it starts out really slow and it, then it starts to increase very slowly, not really slowly, but at a moderate rate, not like an exponential rate where it increases really quickly um, and then slows down, um, but it slows, it increases at a moderate rate and then it starts to slow down and then it kind of tapers off and stays at that level. So this equation that I've given you is uh, a rough sketch of y equals 3 divided by 1 plus e to the negative 5 x. So um, a is 3 in this one, b is 1, and r is 5. So that's kind of what a logistic model looks like. And again, these apply to advertising and other situations like that. Our last model is the one you guys are all fa uh, familiar with, is the log model, logarithmic model. The logarithmic model follows, uh, since it's the inverse of the exponent, 
exponential model, it will follow very closely to exponential growth. Um, uh, although it's not quite exactly the same. Um, so the, the logarithmic model follows two ver versions. There's uh, one for natural log and there's one for um, log base 10 that we really focus on. There, so there's y equals a plus b times the natural log of x and then y equals a plus b times the log of base 10 of x. So uh, these are very similar. Uh, the only difference is one is a natural log of base or nat is the natural log and the other is um, I don't want that. I want this. And the other is log base 10. So my axes are actually going to be very similar to each other um, because I don't have a lot of negative values on the x. And in fact, I have no negative values in the generic forms. Uh, or in the ones that I'm going to show you here at least. So we have negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, one, 2. So these, the natural log over here on the left, I'm going to be graphing the equation uh, y equals 1 plus the natural log of x. So our a is 1, our b is 1. Very simple. I could even do natural log of x where a is 0 um, and instead of crossing uh, here at 1 because this plus 1 makes it cross if x was 1 y would be 1 so that's why it crosses there and it's going to curve down like this and then curve up like that if y was 0 plus the natural log of x I would cross at 1 on the x-axis um, but that's not what we have here, so we're not really bothered with that. Uh, for the log, I'm going to do y equals 1 plus log base 10 of x. So it's very similar. Instead of base e, I am base 10. Uh, so they're very close. Again, this one's going to intersect at 1. If x is 1, y is, will also be 1 because log base of 1 would be 0. Um, but since I have that plus 1 out front, I'm going to add 1 to my value. But this one's a little different. It doesn't curve. Um, it curves much more quicker, much more quickly. Uh, so I drop down really quickly. It's very close to the previous one with natural log, um, but it doesn't go as high, and it doesn't. it curves much quicker. So those are, this is uh, for the natural log and for the log base 10, those are my logarithmic models. Alright, so next comes some, oh, didn't see that there. Next we're going to do some, an example. So I have wildlife conservation uh, organization releases 100 animals of uh, an endangered species into a game preserve. The organization believes that the preserve has a carrying capacity of 1,000 animals and that the growth of the herd will follow the logistic curve given where T is measured in months. What is the population after five months? So I want to find P of 5. So I'm going to substitute 5 for A. For letter A I'm going to substitute 5 in for T. So I have 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9E to the negative 0 0.1656 times 5. So I'm first going to do that exponent. So I have 5 times 0 0.1656, which is negative. So I get equals to 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9e to the negative 0 0.8 to 8. And so then I'm going to do e of that. Uh, 
uh, and then times that times 9. So this gives me approximately 1,000 divided by 1 plus 3.93. And then I add the 1 to that. This gives me approximately 1,000 over 4.93. And then I divide that into 1,000. and I get approximately 202.75 so the population after five months is approximately five, uh, 202.75 animals so if they put in a hundred animals at the beginning they will get 202 animals after five months so let me rewrite that answer over here. Oops. So really, it'll be about 203 animals. After how many months will the population reach 500? So again, instead of knowing t this time, we know p of t. So this time, so we have 203 from last time. This time I'm going to let p of t equal 500 and I'm going to solve for t. So the first thing I would do is I would um, multiply both sides by 1 plus by the denominator on the right. So this gives me 500 times 1 plus 9. Actually, I'm just going to copy that. paste it over here equal to 1000 then I'm just going to divide both sides by 500 so I'm left with that same equation only this time I'm going to be equal to 1000 divided by 500 which reduces to just 2 then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides so I have 9e to the negative 0.1656t equal to 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 9. So I get e equal to negative 0.1656t equal to 1 ninth. Then from here, I want to get rid of that e. So I take the natural log of both sides. And I get negative 0.1656t equal to the natural log of 1 ninth. To solve for t, I divide by negative 0.1656. So that means t will approximately equal, let me do the math real quick, uh, natural log of that, divided by 0.1656 negative is approximately 13.3 so 500 animals after 13.3 months so after a little over a year we will have 500 animals using a graphing utility to graph the function use the graph to determine the values of p at which the horizontal asymptotes occur so remember this is uh, what kind of model? It will be, oops, I think I passed it, a logistic model. So it's going to look similar to this. So they're looking for the horizontal asymptotes here and here. It doesn't have to be those two that I have in this example, but they will be something similar. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time, uh, but that's all you have to do is put this equation into your graphing calculator um, and look at where it's, it does not reach, where it stops, where it tapers off. And then you just write down uh, y equals this value and y equals this value, and that's um, what that means. Uh, and then interpreting the meaning of the larger asymptote in the context of the problem 
basically what you're saying is remember the conservation if they re uh, release a hundred animals uh, the carrying capacity of that conservation is a thousand animals uh, so that top asymptote the larger asymptote should be around that 1000 uh, and that's why it tapers off at that point because the amount of animals that can be supported is starting to reach that 1000 uh, so that's your example sorry this took so long uh, again uh, another long one for you guys here's your multiple choice question pause the video now to write it down and answer and here is your free response question again pause the video here fill out the form answer the question uh, if you have any questions answer or ask them in in number five in box five and uh, we'll see you this week